The and following now, program back is to Tech Talk Radio. Tech Talk Radio Network. I've got something that I'm going to try to Rock and roll hoochie too, and you're listening. Really? Okay. Tech Talk Radio. Live on the 19th of October. And welcome to another episode of Tech Talk Radio. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Sean DeWeer. And uh, Justin is out today, but boy, I tell you, you know, we were thinking about, okay, well, can we go a week, maybe do a best of this week, and then Sean dropped the news on me. He got something new, and I said, no, 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 no. We got to talk about that. Oh, no, that's cool. Perfect socks, Justin's out this week, but... Well, he's not a big fan. It's going to be great because he won't be able to hate on it. Yeah, he'd be hating on every every, every time he opened his mouth. He'd be hating on what you're going to talk about. Yeah, this is going to be great. It's going to be the big announcement. Now, when you open the door, does it glow green? All right. Which model were you using before? It looks like it's glowing green. Wow. So you're going. See, I'm on the A+. How much is it? You're even further back. $100. All right. If you really want to have a mini fridge and you... That would be a great gift for the holidays. That's... Right oh, yeah. after that really was announced, you know, Microsoft Apple is using Target as their September in, and October, in, um, you know, brick and mortar, the 7 Plus, and the 7 retailer, but pre orders go had live on the 19th. iPhone, uh, uh, this looks cool. I don't know. We could have one cheap phone, studio. whatever. The iPhone that would be 4 cool. SE, I like whatever it. was, the really it's cheap next, plastic one they made. Every time we do the show, <laughs> I had an iPhone 5S. All right, our website of the week, you mentioned a little while ago. And yeah, I think our listeners should probably take a look at this one. It's a safe website. It's been around for years. Wow. And if you're, well, you, know, you want to find out what's going you, on in you, different you areas, know, it's a great way to do it. You use it for what? Cam. Calling people, texting. Right? It's uh, you know? calling, it's, pictures. It's got, you know, at the time, it was more cameras that you could take time to look at. Camera at. phones. Anywhere you, you know, think it just was great. But yeah, mostly just calling, cam. texting. So uh, they media, got some here on the university campus. Andy, you said you had one by you. Yep. I can pull it up five of phones later. We decided we'll just go. All over the world. Anywhere you can think of, pull up webcams. Now, sometimes the recording of the show was. October 18th. But what I like so about some of went them on to is the, app, the Apple Store you today on the website. Some of them. To yeah, they'll give you look access. Up prices, so they're we can kind of figure out what we want which to get. Which is cool. We talked about so, doing it for an, check it out, as, as an anniversary gift to ourselves. Type right. in your home state or your home city. You, might, store, you might be surprised. To find the, got the got website, really? On you from no, the whole app. All right, uh, yeah. that's it for this week's show. Yeah. Yeah. Just will be back. We'll find out if Sean they had gets his huge Xbox update on the 18th. Mini because fridge. They announced a bunch of new stuff today week. on oh, the 18th. That's right. Yeah. I'm Sean DeWeird. You so can find Apple us on the web at techtalkradio.com. You can listen and subscribe on iTunes. Make sure you give us a review. It's so much faster. It's a little bit smaller than the 7, but the screen is about the same size. It feels faster in my hands. It's sleeker the, the the screen looks comparable compared to the 7 plus is way different it's got the re- higher refresh rate it's is it I'm look sharper happy. does it look so for anybody who is thinking who's maybe using an iphone 7 or 8 uh, or even even a 6 if you've been holding on for a while um if they're thinking about this this is a, a good a good show to listen to because you're going to kind of go over what is part of the newest and the reviews that i've been hearing sean aside from you know talking to you about this have all been very positive from uh, from people that have had the experience of playing around with the the iPhone 13 of what it is capable of doing. Why? So why did you guys say, you know what? Let's go ahead and update. What was the biggest draw for you guys? We just just timing wise, right? We're gonna have a baby in the spring. We didn't want to deal with it later. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Caitlin wanted a better phone on her camera. I. You mean a better camera was, on her phone? On her phone, <laughs> yeah. A better phone on her phone. A little camera. Freudian slip there, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, no, we just, you know, it was time. We'd been talking about it for probably well over a year. And she's like, well, I thought we were going to wait until the iPhone 13s were out. And I was like, they are out. Yeah, oh she boy. goes, oh, well, then let's go. To, so we went to the, we looked them up online and we, we made an appointment at the Apple stores. Apple just does things right. Like it's in, out. We spent less than 45 minutes in the store. We spent probably more money than people should on the phones and walked out of there very happy. Caitlin's phone synced fine and it backed up everything fine. I was having a separate issue with my phone where, where my iCloud backup wasn't working properly because my phone wasn't on the most recent version of iOS. He couldn't sync my phone in the store. So what I had to do is bring it home, update my phone to the most current version of iOS then sync it and let it sync. So they had to sit next to each other for, I don't know, about an hour and a half, two hours earlier this afternoon and 
transfer the data over, but it's been flawless since. So it's, I know, no, it's I great. Know it's you. You hadn't jumped to iOS 15 on your iPhone 7. Were you a little concerned that, gosh, is this really going to work? Am I going to be able to? I, I was really because when he said you have to update it to iOS 15, I was like, can I? Does, <laughs> does, does the seven support it? If anybody's interested in updating to iOS 15, the seven and the seven plus are the oldest generation that'll support iOS 15. Right. So going forward, it'll be the eight. So every, pretty much every iOS generation, they're just bumping down whatever version of iOS. So I, iPhone seven and seven plus won't accept whatever the next iteration of the iOS is. Right. So, you know, I was fine. It took, you know, it took about an app, probably between the two phones updating, because of course, when I updated my phone, the seven plus to iOS 15.02, the other phone was on iOS 15.01. Oh boy! So then that one had that that one had to update, do a small <laughs> update to get online. But then it was seamless. You know, I just put the two phones together, entered a couple things, my i, you know, my app, my iCloud ID, and all this stuff, and then it just said syncing, and it said it's gonna take this long, and it went, it did its thing. It did screw up my watch pairing. Mm-hmm. So which I, watch? I'm, which I'm, brand watch are you using? Are you using Apple the, Watch? The, the Apple Series Three. Yeah. Oh, three. So I'm oh, in wow. the process. Yeah, the Series Three. So I'm a, we bought our watches almost the same time we bought our phones. Yeah, it's still a great watch, and it does what I need it to do. I don't need anything else that our, the newer watches have. Like I don't plan on upgrading this watch until they make me. Um, so the watch is great, but everything just it was seamless. It made it made it very easy to integrate, and uh, you know, it's a, I'm a familiar with the ecosystem. I'm familiar with the layout. It's I'm not jumping ship to Android and having learning curve and things like that. And I'm very happy with it. Caitlin's very happy with her phone. It's the mini was the perfect one for her. Cause it, she likes the smaller form factor. She didn't need, there's no, she has no reason to get a max or a pro or now. What is she, what machine. is she upgrading from the seven, the South. So it was the same, just like you. Yeah. Yeah. So she went to the mini and she loves it. It's, you know, there's a couple UI changes with iOS 15 that are going to take some getting used to. Some changes with the new focus implementation that comes with iOS 15, where previously it was just called Do Not Disturb, where you could turn on Do Not Disturb and block notifications and things like that. But now they've kind of adapted it to what they call focus. You can set up a focus for anything. You can set it up to be on for a certain time of the day. But what it does is it doesn't tell you the person it doesn't block the notifications. What it does is say, I have focus on and you send me a text. Right. It'll respond to you saying, hey, Sean's in focus mode. He would rather not be disturbed right now. But if you really need to get a hold of him, type urgent to send it through. Oh, no, that's kind of cool. So, so that could be good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like a status for your iPhone or an away message for AOL Instant Messenger, if you will. Right. Right. It's just kind of lets people know before they start bombarding you that, you're in the middle of a project or you're in focus mode because do not disturb will just block the notification and it won't tell somebody that they've blocked your notification. Focus mode is a little bit different where it's like, Hey, I'm letting you know this person's in focus mode. Are you sure you want to bug them right now? It's going to be good for, the for your boss. Senders. Yeah. Yeah. For my boss. Yeah. But you can also configure it so that you let certain numbers through automatically or certain people or certain things like that. And you can schedule it for times and things like that too. So um, now, what overall, about well, what about the and I? You know, I think this has been one of the things that me being on the eight and you were on the seven. Uh, you, one of the things we've become so accustomed to, and I know that a lot of uh, people that make that update that go to even I that, that have gone to the iPhone twelve, uh, the thirteen are are not. They're just not into the the home button being gone. It, was that like you've had it now? What almost half a day. Was that like a big adjustment? It's weird because I'm used to, you know, from I had the 5S, right, which had a physical button. It was the last phone to have the physical button. Yeah. 6 and the 6S went to the fake button with the haptic feedback, right? And then when I went to the 7, the button, there's a, there's a recessed portion on the, sc the screen, but it's not an actual button. It's a fake button that you get fake haptic feedback when you press the button in imitating a button press. Right. I liked that tactile feel yeah. of me pressing the button and unlocking the phone. 
I'm the it's, same way. It's it's weird to raise your phone up, see the little unlock icon go from the face ID, and then having to swipe up to, to go to the home screen. So not having the home button is a little weird. But just playing with it for half the day so far, I'm already used to it. Nice. I find myself catching, just right, resting my thumb towards the bottom of the screen and not swiping at first a couple of times. But I think it's very intuitive to swipe up to unlock the help. It, it'll it'll tell you swipe up. You know, small text will come up. Swipe up to unlock. But what about the uh, the I, iOS 15 interface? Because I haven't updated yet. I was thinking about it. I made a backup of my of my iPhone just over the weekend, and I was thinking about doing it today, but. Towards the end of the day, everything started piling on me, so I really didn't do it. I want to do it when I can pay attention to it and focus on it. There's a couple of apps that I use daily. I want to make sure those still work. How was, I mean, on the surface, you're looking at, you know, if you had both iPhones on you and knowing you, you probably did not trade in your your iPhone 7. I would think you didn't. Nope, still got it. I, I, did, I did not trade it in, so I, I have never, for one, because the six generations old, they were only going to give us up to fifty dollars for it. Oh, please, yeah. Which is it's it's like not even worth it, right? It's not, I'll probably just end up tossing it in my glove box in my truck, fully charged in case of an emergency, mm -hmm. or keep it charged and use it as a media playback device in the house. Or yeah, a wi a wise controller or something to play games on. Uh, something to play games on, or you know, have it set up to be able to play music. Well, and we talked we talked about this not long ago about you know putting it in the glove compartment and using your you know your older smartphone as an emergency device. One thing to remember uh, is even if you're using that and you could still make nine one one calls if you had to, even without service, I believe the the problem is they're not going to be able to triangulate where your location is. So something to think about if you are going to do that. But it is still good to have because you never know when you're going to need it. Right? Yeah, I mean, and it's it's just you know it's just another source of if you need to make an emergency call, it's great. But if you have Wi-Fi somewhere mm -hmm, and yep. you're having an emergency, you have access to everything on your phone. All your, your it's all synced to your iCloud, things like that. You can make FaceTime calls, all that stuff, Wi-Fi calling, all that stuff. So you can watch social media. Um, you could watch movies on it, and you still have your phone available. So if you want to watch yeah. Netflix or anything like that, yeah, or you know, just like I said, it's just nice to have laying around for for testing things. If you want to test an app that you don't want to put on your main reg regular phone or, you know, just, just playing around with. So Caitlin kept hers too, because like I said, they were only going to offer like 45 bucks for it or something. Man, so that's crazy. All right. A big question I have for you and Eddie trunk, who is a radio host on Sirius did something this past week. He went out and bought just like you did, got himself a brand new iPhone. But he said, when he was in the store, the clerk told him, Oh, well, you're going to have to get a new brick, a power brick, because your old ones are not going to work. And, you know, he relayed that in his uh, his tweet that he had tweeted out. And I made sure I let him know no, that's not the case. You have your option of getting a fast charger, which you could spend more money on, which it looks like you may have done. Or you can use your older charger and still, uh, if it's lightning, you know, you could still plug in and still charge. If you were charging your eight or your seven, you could still charge your iPhone 13 with it. So be very careful at that. So, you know, but the thing is, if you want to get the faster charging option, you do what, what Sean did and buy that, that extra brick that will do it. It's got, well, is it 25 watt? I mean, it's, it's, a, a, it's, it's, it's 20 watt. 20 so watt. That's it. I'm yeah. just looking at this. I'm looking at the specs right now. I'm just comparing this, the numbers on them just to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's five volt. It's five volt one. It's five volt one and a half amp for the regular charger that came with my iPhone Seven Plus. Right, and it's five volt two point two amp. So it's basically an iPad charger. Yeah, it's a faster charger. Five volt three amp. Yeah. So some people have said, it, well, because if you you know if you you run it down to ten ten percent, you want to just make sure you can charge up and get maybe you got to go somewhere. The having the fast charger is a, is a nice way to do it. Uh, and get a charge quickly. You and you spent a few extra bucks to do that. Yeah, it was nice. It was twenty bucks, right? The extra charge. So it's just nice to have it because you know it's just a little bit faster charge. Mm -hmm. But 
I'm not, I don't have to change. If I'm going to leave it charged overnight, I don't care how fast it charges. Right. So I won't change out my power brick upstairs. Right. I won't change out my power. You know, I'm not going to change out the USB cable in my car. Now, you what, know, one thing was, you're going to have that you, I don't think you had with the seven is the ability to wireless charge it. Correct. Yeah. That's something new is I do, I, I know that they accept the key, the key chargers. Right. Or the, or however they pronounce it, the QI chargers, the key, QI, yeah. key wireless or, um, which I'm excited for because I'll probably end up getting some sort of wireless charging. Um, but we spent enough on the phones <laughs> and the one power brick today that I'm good <laughs> on Apple products for a while. Yeah. Now you got the, you didn't get the pro max, you got the pro version. So the big thing that people are talking about with that is the camera array uh, and the fact that you could shoot some video on this and use depth of field, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. So the big differences are there's a little bit camera difference. I believe the, the max has a, a different lens with a, some better optical, actual optical zooming. Um, I think it's has a couple different storage options as well. I don't, I think, I believe they use the same chip in these between mm-hmm. the, the max and the pro the screen is like a half inch bigger on the max than it is on the pro it wasn't worth the extra 150 bucks or whatever it was wow. so wow the only thing i did do was when i looked it on the store and i put it in my cart on the store we didn't buy them on the on the store we went we actually went to the store at right. the mall they didn't have the 128 gig version oh which is what I wanted. Yeah, because you shoot a lot of video. The next size up they had was 512 gig. Oh, wow. Is that the one so, you got? That's the one I got. Whoa. <laughs> so I was I thinking spent, you went, you know, lower. That's no, great. They, no, no. They only had, so they only start at 128. They have 128, 256, 512, one terabyte. Right. Wait, one so, terabyte? I didn't even know they're doing one terabyte. Yeah, on, on the Max and the Pro, they're doing one terabyte. Wow. So I got the 512. It cost me another 200 bucks. Uh, but now I don't have to worry about, I, 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 not that I was worried about shooting video on my seven plus cause I had the 128 gig there, but I, I did lower the resolution on my cam on my video because I didn't, I don't shoot a whole lot of video, but right now I, now I'm going to feel a little more comfortable just kind of shooting whatever and not worrying about taking up space and having it eat up precious space on my phone and stuff like that. So, uh, I'll be, it's, could I have waited four to six weeks to get one? Yeah, sure. But did I want it right now? Yes. So, because what then you... Caitlin would have been holding over my head saying, oh, I've got my phone. You don't. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, and that's the thing. If you're, if you do take a lot of photos, you do a lot of video, you use it for that. Getting the, the, I mean, yeah, we've got the cloud. You could upload to the cloud, but, but seriously having it all in one so you can work with it works out cool. Have you gotten any new apps yet? Have you looked at, you know, cause there are new apps that really benefit with iOS 13 or 15. Uh, I'm sorry. iOS 15. Yeah, no, I haven't. I, I just, uh, you know, some of the ones we were required to update, right. It took, it took a while for them to update in terms of downloading to my, my phone. Um, but I haven't taken advantage of any specifically specific apps that have been designed for iOS 15 yet. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure I will find some. Uh, I know there's some video and camera applications that I could utilize at work um, that I'm really excited to try. So we'll have to see. But I've got it. I've had it for a couple hours. Really, fully functional. Maybe the last hour and a half. Really, just watching movies with Caitlin on the couch, just poking around and updating things and reorganizing my home screen and all that stuff. But the the, the big the big Striking differences so far are the quality of the screen. Mm-hmm. The text looks cleaner. Everything's smoother because the refresh rate's higher. Uh, the cameras are uh, just amazing what the cameras can look like, what, what they look like so far. This one's got, I can do a wide angle, which is great. Uh, I can do a 3X optical zoom, which is great on wow. this camera. Right. So um, I'm really, really excited to see what I can do with this. One of the what things I, I've noticed, though, Sean, is you, you've been holding up that, that phone, and if anybody want to take take a look at our video, they can see it. You don't have a case on it yet. I, I don't, I'm probably not going to get one. What? Why wouldn't you not? Why would you not get like an OtterBox or a life, you know, life case? I mean, I, I ran a cheap Tech 21 case on my seven, right, and ne- never ran a screen protector. 
Yeah, you don't run into the same problems I run into. I'm clumsy, so I, I would drop it. You know, I, I, I've, knock on wood, right? Yeah. But we have the Apple Care. That if heaven forbid I drop it and it breaks the glass, it'll it'll replace. They'll replace it. But right. Yeah, that's one I've of the things. Never that I, had I, a major issue with an iPhone dropping and breaking, or I don't know if I'm just not as clumsy as some people with my phone, or I don't know. But, are you using? Are you going to be using the Face ID portion of that? Because I know. One of the things that I, I've been told about uh, the iOS, uh, the iPhone 13, it's so confusing sometimes, but the iPhone 13 is that if you break the glass, you know, it used to be that, say if you broke, broke it and it was out of warranty and you would take it to somebody and there's so many shops now, like we have tons of them here in, you know, Tucson Green Valley that can repair your smartphones and change out the glass and do all that. But I've heard that due to the new, you know, the face ID and the way that the screen is configured, that... You're, you're out of luck going, you have to go to an Apple authorized vendor. And I know that's part of that whole right to repair thing. But again, that runs into that same situation. Yeah. I mean, I could see that being an issue. Um, I've only ever had once I've only repaired a screen once mm -hmm. I personally repaired a screen for some people. Those run older phones, iPhone four, yeah. iPhone five S and things like that. So I've, I've not run into replacing screens on any of the newer phones yet. I'm sure. You know, like I said, we did the two years of Apple Care, which I highly recommend for any Apple device you buy. Just it, they are so great when it comes to repairing things if there's an issue. Now, I don't know that from personal experience, but I, I've dealt with Apple products long enough in the commercial environment as well that the Apple Care is almost just worth the yeah. 200 bucks for two years. So, because um, accidents do happen, right? I, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I will probably drop my phone and I'm probably going to be nervous that I'm going to break something, right? But, I've got that guarantee that Apple will replace it front or back glass if, if something does happen. So what is a, what's the size of the screen on that one? I mean, it's six, I think it's six inches. I think is if, if I remember correctly, that's a, that's a pretty good size screen for anybody who's looking to really look at photos and look at the videos and take, take pictures and the whole bit. And of course to make phone calls, you could do that as well. Yeah. That makes it pretty the, nice. The screen is five, it's it's 5.78 inches tall, 2.82 inches wide. The display itself, 6.1 inches. Now, what I, I really want to see, and, and maybe you can report to us next week on it, is battery life. I mean, that's, you know, that's a thing we're always looking at. Um, some people have noticed they'll do a, an, an update from Apple and suddenly their battery life will decrease. Or maybe they're, you know, they're not able, able to use their smartphones the entire day. I think a lot of us, I mean, you men, you remember we used to be able to use it for maybe four hours and then you'd have to charge, charge up again. Uh, people would like to be able to have a, a smartphone that they can use for the entire day. They get home, plug it in and, and it's going to be good for the rest of the night. Yeah. I think with the, the newer chips, the newer chipsets and the if high efficiency cores they're putting in, you get great battery life. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly what the battery life is going to be like on this. They say it can do, I'm trying to pull it up right now, but they say if you, so here's the specs right from the Apple website, right? Video playback from a full charge, 22 hours. Wow. That's good. Video playback streamed 20 hours, audio playback, 75 hours. Wow. So if you're only doing those features on it. That's yeah, what you're so like, if you're get. doing, if you're playing audio and you have the screen off, right? That's using minuscule amounts of, of battery life, right? Yeah. Um. So, you know, it, I'm not worried about the battery life. I never had issues with my seven. Right. And the capacity, I'd have to look what the capacity is on the battery from the seven plus to the thirteen pro. But I'm sure I'm going to get more efficiency out of this battery than I would on my seven my seven plus. So, um. You know, and I'm not on my phone all the time. I'm not, I'm not a, I wouldn't call myself an average iPhone user, right? Right. I, I'm not. Especially if you're not getting media. on, yeah, if you're not getting on social media, you're going to save yeah, a lot you know, of time. You know, so if I'm not on social media, it's, I rarely ever had to charge my, my phone during the day at all with the iPhone 7, unless I was making lots of phone calls or, you know working in the field troubleshooting and, and being on phone calls and messaging all the time and having my screen on, I never had to charge my phone. So with the wireless charging, I'll probably install some sort of wireless charging in my car 
uh, that way it charges while I'm driving or I can just plug it in. But do you have CarPlay yeah. in the in the car? I do. We're actually curious to find out. I believe Caitlin's RAV4 has wireless CarPlay. Nice. Which the new iOS supports. I think iOS 14 and iOS 15 support wireless CarPlay. So she wouldn't have to plug her phone in to get CarPlay. I believe in my 2017 Colorado, I still have to plug it in to get CarPlay. I don't think mine supports wireless CarPlay. Right. Well, cool. All right. Well, if anybody is thinking about doing this and they have any questions, feel free to drop us an email. Tech guys at techtalkradio.com. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back with more of Tech Talk Radio. Big announcements were made today as well. And you've got the info on that. Apple all day. (laughs) All right. We'll be back with more of Tech Talk Radio. And now back to Tech Talk Radio. A lot going on, especially in the world of Apple. Uh, Of course, the first segment we were talking about uh, Sean's brand new iPhone, which... uh, God, now you're making me want to go and get one, and I'm, I don't want to spend the money right now. But did you buy it outright, or did you do the uh, the payment? We, we bought we bought them outright. We'd been saving up for them because, like I said, it's been over five years <laughs> since we bought our phones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> December of 2016. Right. Almost December of 2022. So that's that's almost six. That's almost six. Yeah, six years. It's almost it's crazy for a phone, right? So we bought them outright. Because that's what we did last time. It's just easier, more beneficial. If there's something goes wrong or we want to upgrade, we're not pinched into a contract or anything like that. So I do know uh, that I do know that um, when it comes to the the shipments of the iPhone 13, if people are thinking about that now, uh, originally Apple said they were going to have 90 million units uh, available in this last quarter, but uh, this the you know the chip shortage and it is a real thing. It's affecting all levels. Uh, and even Apple, which, you know, they kind of have their own kind of way to get all this stuff. Even them are saying we're going to be 10 million units short when it comes to that. So I, I, did that fuel any of the idea like, Kaylin, if we're going to do it, let's do it now? Well, I mean, like I said, I, I this morning we talked about it. She had a, a massage appointment that she went to. And then I looked them up on the website and couldn't find, couldn't go to buy them. I couldn't figure out why I was like, what is going on that I can't buy my phones online. Mm-hmm. Well, Apple was updating the store today. Uh, yes. Brand new stuff. They just today, I, they, they had an event today. I completely spaced on the event. I like watching these because it's always fun to hear about the new technology and stuff like that. So Apple had their, um, I don't even remember what they called it. They had a special, they had a second fall event. They normally only do one fall event. Right. And this, yeah, this second, is the second they did, one. They did a second one. So it was called Unleashed. Unleashed. There you go. Okay. Um, so that happened on the 18th of October. And my initial thoughts were they're going to announce an M2 chip. They're going to announce the successor to the M1 chip. Well, they didn't do that. They did one better, I think. Mm-hmm. They announced two new versions of the M1 chip. The M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Now, for our listeners who don't know what the chip does, can you kind of? Oh, the chip is, it's the processor, right? right. It's like, if, if you don't, if you're not following and keeping up the tabs on who's doing what with silicon in the world, right? You have Intel. Everybody knows who Intel is. Mm-hmm. They make a lot of computing chips. AMD makes a lot of computing chips. Mac, two, almost two years ago now, made their own silicon right. called the M1, which they exclusively said, in two years, we're no longer going to be making Intel-based Macs, period. The M1 architecture is based around the, uh, the ARM, the, you know, the A15, the bionic chips they have. It's all, they're all going to a seamless silicon integration. All right. of their applications will work seamlessly across all of the silicon. It's going to be great. Yeah. So I'll get into the details of those chips independently, but what other things they announced were two new MacBook Pros. I'm hearing great things about them already. Oh, my Lanta. These <laughs> <And I'm, laughs> are going to be amazing. And I'm not, I'm not even a, I mean, I have an iMac in the garage, but I'm really not a Mac user. But something is telling me this really is going to be a pretty neat product. I don't know what Apple is doing with this M1 chip and the M1 Max, the M1 Pro now, but they are killing it. Mm-hmm. And what they're able to do on their own platform is just unreal. It's it, 
the from watching the the the, the keynote today, it was just. I, I could bore you to death with details, but just go to Apple's website, check it out. They are doing some really, really amazing stuff. Um, so they had the they had a 13 inch, I'm sorry, a 14 inch, and a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Right. Two new models announced. Uh, the kind of the, the the highlights of those are mag a mag the MagSafe charger makes a comeback. Mm-hmm. That was a big thing that people got frustrated about when they went to the USB C style ports that's how you charged it you yeah. had a USB C charging port so they re brought they kind of they kind of rehashed the magsafe port which is kind of just a staple of macs all the macs have had magsafe ports for a long time the right. macbook pros no touch bar i was kind of caught off guard by that touch so bar. on the macbook pros they have the t- the led touch bar at the top of the panel right which got got rid of the function keys oh. and kind of added and kind of added app support for things it would change you could scroll on it you could do certain things you could it was a little, basically a little mini keyboard that brought up different functions when things happened and didn't get a lot. It was not very successful. It was not great. The HDMI port on board, the last iteration of the MacBooks got rid of. They only had four USB-C ports right. and a headphone jack, an SD card slot. Whoa. Now that's pretty cool. It's so, so basic. Back. It's so basic, but it's something a lot of users would appreciate. Yeah, right. It's, it's something that you didn't, you don't think like, oh, I could just get a dongle, but it's like. They're understanding. They're listening to the the fan the fan base and saying, "Well, why should I have a dongle to? I already have a dongle for my camera. I shouldn't need a dongle for my computer." So now it's mm-hmm. SD. You know the 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 SanDisk high capacity whatever that uh, format is available right on the right on the side. Right. You just slide your card right in and go. Uh, it's a mini LED display, so that's a new technology they have now for their screens. But they're using the whole screen, so they added a notch. Just like on the iPhones, the camera is in a notch. So the screen goes all the way to the top, but there's a small notch just like in the in the, in the iPhones where the camera is. Oh, wow. So if I remember correctly, I think it was something like four or five millimeters from the edge of the screen. Right. Like the bezel is very, very tiny. Um, so that's something that people really because it just gives you more pixels, gives you more real estate. It's really great fun. Um, so then the, you know they announced the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chip, and then the other thing that I really liked, they announced a HomePod Mini. All right, so for those who don't know what the HomePod is, and I wanted to get one of these things, these these beasts I call them, uh, HomePod Mini is basically a speaker, but it's smaller, right? Is that what it's yeah, going to be? Yeah, it's a little speaker. It's got volume controls on it, and it's, it's. I don't want to say it's like an Amazon Echo or those yeah, types of things, yeah. but that's what it is. It's a home automation type thing where you can say, "Hey Siri, turn on the lights," and right, "Hey Siri, tell people it's dinner time," that kind of thing. But they have them available in. <laughs> yeah, Siri's going off. <laughs> Siri, Siri's talking to me. Everybody's hungry now. <laughs> but um, you know they. Three, the available in multiple colors now. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. that's cool. I thought that was kind of cool, but now you big, can bridge. The... You can bridge these, can't you? So, like, if you've got a HomePod Mini in one room and another another, you could actually have whatever music is in both rooms. Correct. You can do whole whole home announcements. You can say, "Hey, play across all the air." You know, the home pods, and it'll seamlessly play across them all. So you can just walk from one room to another and have mm-hmm. seamless music. Yeah, they're really cool and uh, they're very modern looking. Very modern. Yeah. They've got a, a mesh kind of look to them. Um, they're very modern looking. Um, and you know, think of the old iPod commercials with the multicolors and the silhouettes and stuff. Mm-hmm. They did a they did a whole campaign about that right before they announced it, where it was people just dancing in the multicolors and stuff. So it was, <laughs> was kind of cool. So it's kind of like going back to the original iPod announcement where they had all those multicolors and very Pop art, pop arty type yeah. of look. Um, but then the other big thing that I know you're going to be excited for another new set of AirPods. Ah, yes, got to have those AirPods. They announced their third generation of the AirPods. Right. What? Which, now, what? Are, how are they going to make them better? So you're you asked how are they going to make them better? Uh, they they're not IPv6 56 rated, but they say they're resistant to sweat and water. 
a force sensor for easy and intuitive control of music and phone calls, extended battery life, so six hours of listening time, and up to 30 hours of total listening time with the charging case. So they accept the, they are able to accept the, the faster charging as well too. So um, they, if, you, if you're out and about and you, you're listening and you need to drop in your old charger for a minute, mm -hmm. it says it, 15 minutes will give you almost a half charge. Yeah, a lot of people don't know you. So you charge the carrying case and that gets charged. And so when you're done with, you know, your AirPods, you take them and you put them in that case, they get charged. And so yeah. in that case, it doesn't have to be charged because it's got a, it's got its battery pack in there. Yeah. So you have to charge the little pack, which so it's it's efficient to if you're wearing them and you're not using them, you just drop them back in the charger in your pocket or in your bag while you're not using them and they stay almost fully charged. So it's great. You get a long life with that, too. Yeah. And one of the big things they spent quite a long time on during this keynote was spatial audio. Oh, sweet. They brought they're bringing spatial audio to these and, I, you know advanced algorithms and it, who knows the magic they're doing, right? To make it sp do spatial audio. For, and, for and listeners just, who don't understand what that is, uh, imagine uh, a book, a book on, you know, you're reading a, a book, uh, Amazon book or whatever, and listening to that and they have sound effects and music and, you know, uh, he walked in from the left and then you could actually hear them walking in from the left. So that's, it really creates almost a 3d surround sound type of feel. I think that's a good way to put it. Three dimensional sound. Yeah. It's kind of fun they make it. It's not surround sound. It's no. three dimensional sound. So it's taking it a step further. Um, but you know, one thing that I like about the, uh, the, the AirPods is that you can seamlessly, you can link them with your iCloud and then anything you're using that's signed into your iCloud, you can, you can designate, yeah, I want to send it to the AirPods. Right. So your, your Apple TV, your phone, your iPad, your, your, HomePod, whatever you want, right? It's just, you can get all those things linked up so that it's seamless. Right. Which I know that I've talked about it. You know, I got the wise, the wise earbud pros. Yeah. But, I, but nowhere, much... they're nowhere near the, they're nowhere near this, right? Yeah. But I'm very happy with them for the price I paid for them. Yeah. For others who don't know a wise, not too long ago, like a couple months, right? Introduced yeah, the, months. the, their, their ear, earbuds, Earpods, whatever. The, what are they calling them officially? Wise, wise buds. Wise buds. Okay, so they put out some. They are much cheaper when it comes to the cost involved of when what you're going to be spending for the Apple AirPods. So the third AirPods. generation of the AirPods are one seventy nine. Okay. The wise bud pros are fifty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> so I'm very happy with them. Are they comfortable? I don't they are. I put the bigger the bigger uh, silicone cups in for my ears. Mm -hmm. They they stay in just fine. And what about uh, battery life with them? Um, it's decent. Yeah. I would say uh, if I'm listening to music, I get about four or five hours of solid straight music listening. But you know, if I'm if I stop and I get to do something or I eat lunch or something, I'll take them out, and put them in the charger. So yeah, I've I've talked to some charged. people who've got the the Apple versions. And they like them because they do get pretty good battery life with those. Yeah. And now so, with the spatial audio, that's going to be pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. I'm really curious. I mean, just the, the, the way they're advancing technology with all this stuff is just, it's every year we see something leaps and bounds differently and it's, it's been displays for a while and now it's audio because everybody loves good sounding audio. So how is the compression getting better to make it not sound so compressed? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always going to be compression with digital audio, but how good can the math get to make it not sound compressed? So yeah, we'll very see. Good stuff. But, All right, know, wait, we got to uh, take it. We got to take another quick break. Um, there is a lawsuit going right now. And at least, you know, they've been talking about this this week. Uh, if you have a Canon printer and I, I love Canon as a company, but, if you have a Canon printer, you might want to you might want to check this one out. We'll tell you about that coming up with Tech Talk Radio. Uh, you can find us on the web at techtalkradio.com. Now, back to Tech Talk Radio. So we were talking about Wise and I I've used the Wise cams. Never really had a problem with them. I'm I'm pretty happy with them. Um and you know, you you're using the some of the different products from Wise. You're getting you're actually going, you know, they keep introducing products and you're actually going to be going with their thermostat. 
Uh, yeah. So uh, this was something that I just I happened to not jump on the bandwagon right away because, you know, I was like, I don't need a thermostat. I can get up. I can touch the, you know, I can just manually do it. But then Kayla and I, more and more we talked about it, the more we want to be able to have control if, if we go on vacation or we're not looking like we're hard. We're still hard up that we're not going to make a smart home. Right. Not something we're not going to automate it to where we can say, hey, turn the temperature to 55 or like we're not comfortable with that level of automation, but we're comfortable with being able to adjust the thermostat like, oh, crap, we're on vacation and we did with the, the house is going to be at, at 74 degrees. Well, the entire time we're gone during the winter. Well, now I can go in and drop it down to 68 or something a little bit more manageable. So Wise makes a digital thermostat. So I should be getting that in the next day or two. Excited to get that put in to add it to the. I'd have to count the number of wise devices I have in my house. It's it's <laughs> it's well above twenty. <laughs> I like their their wise cam. Uh, we use the wise cam indoors. I've got a different. I've got like a camera for every manufacturer, and I just love them. Yeah. So one of the things. So I've got the one of the. I've got a couple version twos. I've got a couple version ones. A couple version twos. And a couple version threes. The version twos and up. Do you remember when we got into the pandemic and Wise said, hey, take this firmware and make your camera into a USB camera and you can use it as a USB camera? Yeah. So well, people you guys like, remember, for Zoom you calls. Remember I, yeah. I, did, I did that. We I used it on the show for a little while. But then I wanted the camera back to its functionality, so I reflashed it and got it back to normal. Well, one of the things they do now is they have another version of firmware that you can actually turn your camera into a camera that will do an RTSP stream over your oh, network. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now for our listeners so, who don't know, uh, can you kind of explain that? Uh, it's it's called RTSP, it's real time streaming protocol. So it's literally streaming video across your network to where if you had a receiver or a, a program that could see an RTSP stream, you could then watch it on your computer. VLC player, OBS, vMix, all those types of things. So I'm hoping by the next show, I'll be able to use that as I want to use one of the wise cameras over RTSP as my camera source for the show. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. So, that would or be neat. set one up or set one up somewhere in the house over the network so that I can use it during the show and show you guys that it's doable. It's just one of those things I like playing around with. It would make a really great addition to some low level broadcasts that want a POV shot or a, a scenic shot or something where they don't want to spend five hundred dollars on a NDI camera that's going to eat up 80, 80 meg eighty meg worth of uh, eighty whatever eighty me megabits yeah. worth of bandwidth across a, a, a network stream, but just have a low qual a, a, a relatively low quality camera that looks decent available on your network. So now, could somebody then embed that on their website? So, like, say you got a a, a store that's you know unique. Or, you know, and you got the outside of the store and you've got a beautiful, you know, picturesque view from the store. Could they put that on their website and just say, log in, yeah, take there's, a look? There's, there's nothing stopping from somebody from sending that RTSP stream to whatever they want. Right. That's actually yeah, so you, a really cool idea. So I thought that was kind of a cool thing they did. I was doing, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. I was doing radio in a small town in Colorado from here. Uh, and it was kind of cool because... I wanted to check out what was going on weather-wise because once in a while I'd have to do like a weather report for them. And I found a bar that had a camera that was streaming one of these streams from outside the bar. And I would like, you know, pull them up on the web and look, and, oh, look, it's snowing there. So that way I could actually give a full report and see what it looked like. Totally beneficial to help out so you know what's going on in the area. Yeah, so, I mean, those types of things are cool. If you're interested in seeing people's cameras from around the world, EarthCam is a great, we can oh, talk yeah. back to be our website of the week. EarthCam is a great website for seeing all sorts of They've stuff. They've been around a long time. The, been around a long time. There's two cameras on, on the university campus that you can look at if you're interested in seeing where I work. Uh, we have one up on uh, Mount Lemon, which is our kind of a little mountain area we have out here, which is very nice. It's a great getaway. But it's always cool during the wintertime because, you know, it might be, Oh, 95 here. It would be snowing up there. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, the, but still, that's what it feels like. Soon. I, I feel it in my bones. <laughs> uh, you, we were talking about wise, and I wanted to mention this. You know where I have seen 
Because you, you might walk into, you know, a big box store and you might have a problem finding the wise devices, right? But I found pet stores have been carrying some of the wise products because they make great pet cams. Yeah, oh yeah, they make great pet cams. And it's I think they really tapped into pet owners didn't want to buy the two hundred dollar security camera just to watch their pet. Yeah. Well, hey, why not spend forty dollars and watch your pet instead? Yeah. Well, then now they're buying four cameras, so they could have bought one camera at two hundred dollars. Now they've got four cameras at just over one hundred and sixty bucks. They're great pet cams. The, the the pan tilt zoom ones are very popular. You can find a lot of great information about what people are doing at the Wise Cams on their forums, the mm-hmm. Wise Wise Cam forums. Um, that's kind of where I find all these little firmware update things and tricks and cheats you can do with the cameras to play around with them or get into the beta firmwares and things like that. It's just it's really fun to be a part of that community because they're all like minded. They want cheap reliable stuff and that's what you're getting from wise i'll tell you i had a, a situation uh maybe you know why this happens but i had a situation last week where um an uber dropped a guy off in front of our house around about eleven forty-five. now i live in the middle of a street not you know not like at the the end of a street or you know it's not a cul-de-sac it's a long street and right you know right about halfway down the road i'm this is where my house is right and i've got neighbors i've got houses on either side and this uber pulls up at about eleven forty-five at night Let's a guy out and he's got a big old backpack and camo jeans and, uh, and he's got a, you know, baseball cap and he's on his phone. He's looking back and forth and, and then he walks up our driveway. Now I didn't see this till two in the morning. I was already, already asleep and uh, walks up the driveway and then goes to our front door. Well, my ring is not working right now. So he ended up going back down the driveway, did this about five times. And it was really kind of weird. Then he'd walk around in the middle of the street looking at his smartphone. I kept thinking he was fishing, looking for Wi-Fi signals that might be open. But why my house? I don't know. So then he leaves for about half an hour and then comes back. Half an hour later, walks up, knocks on our garage door, which is, you know, right there underneath the camera, and then comes up to the front front door, which I can't, again, I couldn't see what was going on. So um, I, I called the police. They came out. They took a report and they said, you know, it could be that he got dropped off by the Uber and didn't know where he was. He might have thought he was on the right street, had the right address, and he couldn't locate it. That's why he kept coming back. You know, maybe he was knocking and we didn't hear it. But um, so I, I found a camera that I had in a box, a real link. And I'd done a, a segment on it some time ago, and they didn't want it back. And it has a solar panel on it. So I charged up the camera, and I put it behind the glass in that's next to my office, uh, pointing out to our door. And it's great. The quality is amazing. And it's battery-powered. So I charged it up and I mean, it's got a long battery life. If I want to, you know, hook it up to a solar panel, I can, I've got that too. Um, But it's behind glass. Now I turned off. And one thing to remember, if you're ever going to put a camera, like a security camera behind glass, whether it be a wise cam or any of the other cams, you turn off your, you you turn off the the night vision, right? Yep. You also turn off the uh, indicator because that's going to, that's going to, to shine on the glass, but it won't do the motion activations behind the glass. So if I notice like when I go out to go check, you know, the trash or I go out to make sure the cars are locked up, it's not doing any active. It's not notifying me that there's movement. So I notice when it's behind glass, it doesn't do that. And I don't know why just because of the glass, it doesn't do it. Is that the first signal it sees? And that's a constant and it doesn't yeah, see that change. I, I don't know. This is a wise or is this a, something no, it's, yeah. a, it's a company. And again, the quality I really like, Called Real Link, Real I've Link, never played with those. a really great camera, and it's it's a weather camera. Could go outdoors a whole bit. I just haven't mounted it yet. So this is another one of those things that not a lot of people know about. Wise is they actually make a rubber gasket. Yeah, for the fronts of their cameras, it's a square that your camera just squishes into, and then it sticks to the window. So you're flush against it. Really? It's, rubber, it's like a little rubber square that goes around the front of the version. It's for the version one, two, or three. The same. They're all the same size. Right. But yeah, then you can just. It's sticky. He's got a. You know. He's pick, pick. You know. Peel off the adhesive. And you stick it flat on the window, so it takes out all of that reflection. Oh, I had no idea. That's kind of yeah, a neat I, idea. I, I'm gonna have to look at I that. Think you buy, I think you can buy a two pack for like four ninety nine. What? What? What is the website? Wise. W Y Z E dot com. And right. you have to, they don't always announce stuff that they're selling, which I kind of like. Yeah. Because it kind of keeps you coming back looking for more little nuggets. <laughs> uh, 
And I just happened to see those one time. And I was like, what? I don't remember them announcing that. And then, you know, I just I, I was immediately bought them. Well, if you are going to put it behind a window, just don't forget to turn off the infrared portion of that. Yeah, that they, they, they when, when you buy them, they send you a little cheat sheet that says, if you're putting this in the window, turn off the night vision, turn off the indicator, turn off, because you can, otherwise it blinks blue. Yeah, you're going to see that. Like that All right, so we, we're going to talk about this. this. So there's a guy that has filed a suit against Canon. And, you know, Canon makes cameras. Canon makes all kind of medical equipment. Canon makes printers. And the suit basically is, and if you've ever owned a Canon printer, you might want to heads up on this one because you could be part of a class action suit. What the suit is alleging is that Canon supposedly sells their all-in-one printers. And an all-in-one printer is really, they're really kind of cool because they give you the ability to scan, to fax in some cases, if you still use that technology, uh, but you could scan and save as a PDF and then print and print in different colors. And a lot of the printers now come with more than just the standard three. You might get five. And each one of those, those you know, inks are going to be kind of pricey, sometimes 25 to 30 bucks per color. And if one stops working, you got to replace the other one. It's, it's just the way, the way it works. Well, what he found out is, and apparently Cannon said there's no workaround, if his ink goes out on his printer, he can't use the scanner anymore. It won't allow him to scan. And that's what's driving him nuts, saying, wait a minute, if I don't want to use this as a as a printer, I want to use it as a scanner. But now it's saying I can't use it as a scanner because it doesn't have the ink in there, yet the scanner uses no ink. I think that's hilarious, for one. Yeah. I know that the there's a specific versions of the Canon printers that we have. You know, my mom had some growing up that were all-in-ones. Mm-hmm printer, scanner, fax machine, all that stuff. So I pulled up the article here, and this is, good, this is a brief statement about what this art loss is about. As opposed to the single-function printer it sells, Canon calls these multifunction devices a 3-in-1 or 4-in-1 for the fact that they pur- purportedly provide three or four different functions. Right. In truth, the all-in-one printers do not scan or fax documents when these devices have low or empty ink cartridges. Canon's advertising claims are false, misleading, and reasonably likely to deceive the public. And that's why he filed a suit, a class action lawsuit. That's what he's looking at. So we'll keep you posted when we hear more about that. Again, I like their devices. They're good. But this does, you know, this is somebody who just said, wait a minute, I'm not going to stand for this. And he took it to court. We're going to take another quick break. We come back. Website of the week. We've got that for you on the way. And now back to Tech Talk Radio. So I've got something that I'm going to try and order between now and next week's show. Really? Okay. I'm going to try and pre-order it. Pre-orders go live on the 19th of October. An Xbox Series X mini fridge. What, why do you need a mini fridge? It looks just like an <laughs> Xbox Series X. It'll hold 10 cans of your favorite beverage. It plugs into AC power, but it comes with a optional DC power, so you can power it on the go. Oh no, that's be cool. Perfect, be perfect for our camper. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna <laughs> see if I can get it. Hundred bucks. Check out the pre-orders. Nineteenth. If you hear this, too, you're too late. Yeah. But check check back next week to see if I get one. It's gonna be cool. Now, when you open Just, the door, when you open the door, does it glow green? On it, the, it, it, from the image from the from the marketing material, it looks like it's glowing green. Oh, now that is super cool. Uh, how much are they so, gonna go for again? A hundred bucks. Hundred dollars. All right. If you really want to have a mini fridge and you, that would be a great gift for the holidays. Oh yeah. That really would be. It says Microsoft is working with Target as their in, in, um, you know, brick and mortar exclusive retailer, but pre-orders go live on the 19th. Uh, This looks cool. We could have one in the studio. That would be cool. I like it. I'm going to have it right next to me so I can just grab a soda every time we do the show. (laughs) All right. Our website of the week, you mentioned, a little while ago. And yeah, I think our listeners should probably take a look at this one. It's a safe website. It's been around for years. And if you're, you know, you want to find out what's going on in different areas, it's a great way to do it. Earthcam.com. All right. It's, uh, you can, it's, it's got more cameras that you can take time to look at. It's anywhere you can think of around the world. Earthcam. So um, they've got you, some here on the university campus. Andy, you said you had one by you. Yep. I could pull it up live and see, you know, I can pull up. All over the world, anywhere you can think of and pull up webcams. Now, sometimes they're not the best quality, mm-hmm. but what I like about some of them is you can control some of them. Yeah, they'll give you access. So they're PTZ Which cameras. Is, 
which is cool. Yeah. So check it out. Earthcam.com. Type right. in your home state or your home city. You might be, you might be surprised to find that you've got an earth cam spying on you from somewhere. Good stuff. All right. Uh, that's it for this week's show. Hopefully Justin will be back. We'll find out if Sean gets his Xbox one mini fridge <laughs> for next week. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Sean DeWeird. You can find us on the web at techtalkradio.com. You can listen and subscribe on iTunes. Make sure you give us a review if you can. Have a great week.